cashew, a tropical evergreen tree that produces the cashew seed and the cashew apple accessory fruit. Roasted cashew nut retails for over $36,700 per metric ton, making the price of cashew today three times higher than that of copper, Zambia's major export. In this documentary, we look at the social economic impact of cashew production in Western Province. There are over 6 million cashew trees planted in Western Province thanks to the Cashew Infrastructure Development Project, CIDP, financed by the African Development Bank and the Government of the Republic of Zambia. Let's start here. Why is cashew so valuable? What are the uses of cashew nut? A lot of people uh, sometimes wonder, you know, when we talk of cashew, because uh, the cashew fruit itself has uh, the nut and also the fruit. All of that is very important. The nut itself, that's the one which is uh, processed. You can use it as a snack and also in cooking. You can do a lot of, of, of recipes for cooking where cashew is an ingredient. In a situation like in our country where we still have high levels of malnutrition, cashew can be an ingredient in some of uh, the high protein supplements for uh, malnourished children. When it comes to the fruit itself, you can eat it as a raw fruit. This can also be processed into a, a lot of other drinks that people can consume. Uh, but also you can use uh, the fruit also to process uh, some alcohol out of, of that. Cashew also is used in a lot of other products like paints. The potential for industrial use is quite uh, high and this is where uh, government also should uh, support the multiple product use of, of, of cashew. With proper care, cashew is easy to grow and has high economic benefits with yields ranging from 2 kilograms to 50 kilograms per tree per year. Uh, these trees, they usually yield only once in a year. So when we say 2 kilograms, that one it means the only 2 kilograms which a, a tree will yield in a given uh, year. This yield will continue increasing with the increasing canopy. Uh, relatively, one would estimate that uh, in a very given year, with good management, uh, it could be adding up to about 2 kilograms. So upon starting in year three or four, you will get two kilograms and uh, it will continue adding two kilogram, two kilogram to a point where you can reach it to having production of about 15 kilogram, even 20 kilogram, even more than that. We have records elsewhere where production is even more than 50 kilogram per tree. In Zambia under the First Republic, we had the, what we were calling national tree planting. Farmers were able to plant cashew in mass. The focus was on planting. So there wasn't a very careful approach as to which species uh, should be planted. And now what we are faced with is a situation of how do we manage these old trees so that they are able to to be productive and support the farmers in terms of incomes. This lack of care of the trees that were planted earlier on is what led to these trees not being productive. A lot of diseases and pests also increased. Now we are faced with a situation to correct by managing these old trees uh, through spraying, pruning, all these cultural practices. Western province has suitable climatic conditions for growing cashew. However, special care has to be taken as most of the Western province has extreme sandy conditions. Most of the farmers, if they delay planting their, their cashew, then they are missing out on the maximum uh, rainfall. 
then the trees may not have enough water in the first season to establish. Previously, when we started planting cashew, it was almost a taboo to hear that you are putting manure on a cashew tree. But now we are emphasizing that because one, we are trying to provide the nutrition that may not be available in the purely sandy soils. And also we are trying to improve the water holding capacity of the sandy soils so that the cashew is able to uh, to have uh, adequate water. During the cold season, we have instances of uh, frost bite in most of the cashew trees. The ultimate uh, solution is to work with our farmers to see how the nutrition of the trees is improved and also uh, where possible uh, to be watering the plants uh, during off season. CIDP is government's effort to revive the cashew industry in the western province. Government basically came up with the, the cashew infrastructure development project because uh, one potential the province has is uh, cashew. Western province particularly was chosen in order to create room for more economic activity in the province. Government identified the province as having very few economic activities with the high incidences for poverty. So this project was identified to come and boost up economic activities. The province itself is lacking in terms of uh, development. There are very few industries that are there so cashew is one of the success stories that the province is expected to produce. Cashew infrastructure development project is basically a government initiative to look at reviving cashew production in the province. The CIDP is a five-year project operating on a loan from the African Development Bank and it's being implemented in 10 districts in the province. And these districts are Shangombo, Sioma, Senanga, Nalolo, Mongo, Dimulunga, Lukulu, Mitete, Kalabo, and Skongo. Uh, these districts were chosen because at the time of the project preparation, they were regarded as the potential areas where cash would grow in the province. And they were also seen to be districts which had the less prone kind of condition towards frost. That's how they were selected. Uh, the project objective is basically to contribute to the economic development of first of the Western province and that of the uh, country as well. This project initially uh, targeted to also rejuvenate about 200,000 old trees and also to plant over 600,000 trees in Mongu district. You realize that uh, there are several components in there and uh, what ETG was focused on doing was on cash plantation, rejuvenation and the establishment. Uh, the project is funded with uh, financial assistance from the Africa Development Bank through a loan that was obtained by our government in 2016 in the total amount of 45 million US. The Zambian government has put in 10 million that comes in through a lot of uh, counterpart funding, some of it in cash, some of it in kind. Most of the land in the Western province is customary and held in trust by the Litunga. It is important for farmers, especially women and youths, to have access to land for the project to succeed. Subsequently, about 60,000 hectares have been reserved for cashew farming. Uh, in the course of implementing project activities, it became apparent that uh, there is need for deliberate effort, deliberate decision, uh, for people to have access to land. 
and this is where the Barros Royal Establishment came in to help with the specific land, uh, basically to support uh, women and youth. The BRE saw it necessary to assist in the cash project to ensure that all those that want to farm seriously get the one hectare of land, they are able to request land from the BRE directly from the headmen, from the Silalo Indunas who are responsible for the area so that they can be given land uh, that belongs to the Litunga, which is not within the family parcels. It's called the Muwangweshi. That land which is still a little bit free, they, anyone is able to access it. Men or women are able to access it. There is deliberate allocation of land to women and youth. And in the areas, in the districts where land has been given, uh, CIDP uh, has been uh, working with the, the technical services branch basically to look at how plots can be allocated and also recruitment of the farmers who are supposed to, uh, to participate into that. So the procedure right now is those um, area in Dunas, they are able to give land to the women if they request for it. And it's simply going to request for it. There are certain traditional um, ways in which they ask for the land. It doesn't cost money. It's just a question of going traditionally with the family members. They are allocated that land. Gender is a cross-cutting issue and is mainstreamed within the cash infrastructure development project. Now, if you look at men and women in uh, Western province, they do all have access to land through their family ties and land that belongs to the family. But those parcels of family land are very, very small. So you will find that they are what we call Katongo Kashang, where they are small, they are all being shared by everyone. For someone to have one hectare of land in that kind of land, it's very, very difficult. The achievement for Sananga uh, is that uh, we have uh, 6,254 beneficiaries, of which um, 3,977 are males and 2,277 are females. The Litunga Liambuela, that is uh, Her Royal Highness, Mbuyo Imuiko, you know, she was able to look at this issue and said, how many women can keep going to ask for land? Therefore, in my chiefdom, she released 2,800 hectares of land to be put under cashew. As I am talking today, I'm a woman beneficiary who received the machineries for processing through CIDP, CEEC matching grant. Several trainings were conducted uh, by ETG and they ensured that women were part and parcel of those trainings and that some women were actually incorporated in being lead farmers. We have so far produced uh, 6.4 million cashew seedlings and our project target in the project document was 6 million. About 6 million seedlings are basically polycolonal. These seedlings, they don't need to be grafted, they just grow because they've been scientifically been selected and bred by scientists. And these have been um, supervised and managed by our implementing partners, the Export Trading Group, ETG in short, and we've benefited greatly from their experience. To satisfy the growing demand for cashew seedlings, CIDP has adopted the concept of community nurseries operated by the members of the community themselves. Um, ETG, um, the Agricultural Research Institute and the Minister of Agriculture were able to have these community nurseries I know, spread all over Western Province in these 10 cashew hub districts and started distributing them seedlings. We trained what we are calling nursery operators. These are members of the community selected, trained uh, in terms of nursery establishment management and also seed was provided. They raised the seedlings, then communities in the particular localities come and collect the, the seedlings for planting. So as Mong District, we have uh, also two nursery 
farming institutes. We have one in, uh, in Simulumbe, where the research institute is. We also have uh, the FTC in Namshakend, where grafting of these trees is being done. We have uh, distributed ceilings to the farmers yeah, for the past two years. 2019-20 and 2021. I can assure you that uh, more than 6 million um, seedlings have been planted on the ground. These are projects sponsored uh, seedling production and farmers receive them for free, but they are supposed to provide their input in terms of managing those seedlings so that they don't just die. As the Zambia Agricultural Research Institute, we are collecting what we call um, scions from these mother trees, um, producing um, good quality uh, seedlings uh, from the mother trees. These good quality seedlings are, are being distributed to the farmers. In the next few years, we shall be able to see um, high quality and good quality cashew trees in this province. Knowledge transfer is key for the overall success and sustainability of the CIDP. We are looking at uh, ensuring that the government extension officers are well trained in terms of cashew agronomy. The farmers that are planting the cashew are equally trained in terms of cashew agronomy. This is what is going to uh, basically provide a basis for sustainability in terms of knowledge transfer at the community level. We've been training farmers to manage these seedlings in a better way so that they can speed up the, uh, the growth of the trees to come to yield yeah, in shorter post, I mean short possible time. We were trained by ETG on cashew farming, field management, how to plant the cashew, how to weed, and up to the harvesting time. These nursery operators were shown how to go about to demarcate uh, points where uh, ceiling should be planted and how planting holes should be prepared, dug and a mixture of the manure and the soil, so that to establish a, a base which could collect rainwater and uh, nutrify the seedling as it grows. So those were kind of the trainings which were done uh, during the nursery operator training. I started with ETG in 2018 as a nursery operator, of which today, I'm training other farmers, teaching them what I was taught by ETG. Training of trainers came in after having established the cash farmer groups. These groups were meant to be composed of cash farmers who are very keen, committed to cash production, so that they form a group to facilitate how to link up with them when it comes to knowledge transfer and uh, all other aspects which are needed uh, during cash production. In total, we had about 1,249 group leaders who were involved in training. We have trained uh, a group of farmers who were selected by uh, community. So from each camp, we got two operators who were trained on how to handle uh, motorized mist blowers, as well as knapsack hand sprayers, which were now to be used for spraying. We, we trained them how to achieve effective spray. We had to show them how to dilute, mix uh, the given pesticide with water based on the recommended uh, dose rate which you have to use to spray for the control of diseases and the uh, insect pest. These uh, spray operators were equipped very well with the protective gears from gumboots, worksuits, helmets, goggles and uh, gloves, even respirators. Export Trading Group, ETG, has adopted a market linkage model to facilitate trade relations between farmers and buyers. Under this uh, project now, there is a very strong emphasis of market linkage 
we embarked on the process of market indication, whereby three tons was sold to Mongo. About 500 farmers benefited from the sale of the cashew nuts which they sold. Out of that, it has really influenced our farmers. They've seen the benefit of growing cashew. We still have this aspect, of course, of going further to capture all the targeted farmers or even beyond. But uh, the other major concentration of the project now will be to start looking at issues of uh, marketing for the cashew, processing for the same product, where government together with partners will establish local processing plants. One of the components within the CIDP is that of constructing of uh, bulking centers so that the farmers have a place where cash can go. Then the buyers basically go to these bulking centers. The issue of marketing is going to be, to be solved. When the trees that we are planting now start bearing fruit, you will see all kinds of, of, of buyers coming in the province. Okay, so what success stories do we have to tell about cash production in Western province? There have been quite a number of jobs uh, created. We have had uh, uh, nursery operators, we have had sprayer operators. On top of that, uh, we have had a lot of uh, transporters that were engaged in terms of uh, uh, transporting nursery materials to the various districts. As well, we have had a number of suppliers that were basically supplying these uh, nursery materials. Uh, but if you look at uh, the overall CIDP project, there were also a number of jobs created in the various components of the project. We have uh, seen quite a number of farmers in the various districts, starting with the, the growing of cashew, doing intercropping. I have got uh... 241 trees of cashew nut, which is coming from ETG. ETG is helping us a lot, giving us knowledge, praying cashew nut for us, and doing everything possible for us, teaching us how to grow cashew nut. I'm very happy that uh, ETG taught us a lot of things about cashew. In fact, we are still uh, wanting ATG to come forward and help us in so many ways. The ATG, I'm giving them a credit because they are supporting me in this program. They have uh, made me to attend so many workshops. Our plants are doing fine following the encouragement, the training that we have had with the ETGs. They have been with us. They have provided us with the, uh, the chemicals. Our land mostly is affected by termites, but the ETGs have come on board to provide us with the, the chemicals. Despite that having it harvested, but the management from the lessons which I learned, definitely uh, I'm seeing some progress in my uh, uh, farming cash. We have uh, benefited a lot from the presence of uh, ETG here in uh, Western Province. They have been uh, making some visitation to our farm and they have been uh, providing advice uh, concerning the general management of our cashew nut plants. And also, uh, once in a while, they have been uh, providing us with uh, chemicals. This is a very good thing to us, especially we widows. I have got five children which I am keeping currently now. So this will go a long way. We have uh, uh, one farmer in Mongu who started some time back with the cashew trees. Now she is into processing and packaging. I'm a farmer, started farming in 2013. I have uh, almost 10,000 trees where I'm collecting nuts. I was selling some nuts from other processors those days, but I was encouraged when I saw that the price of the commodity was uh, so good. 
Brenda Mwanamwalie was among cashew farmers who visited Tanzania on a farmer exposure trip. I was picked, so we went to Tanzania for the farmer exposure trip. So we went there where we even saw how cash in Tanzania is performing. And in Africa, it looks like it's the country which has a, a lot more quality cashew nuts. So we were taken in four big factories where we found the ETG, they have factories, and how the packaging was. Finally, back in Zambia. As a component of social change and continuity, some schools in the Western province are encouraging students to take up cashew farming. As a school, the pupils also are being encouraged to be farmers uh, through the uh, agricultural lesson that we offer in school. We encourage them to uh, plant cashew since it has got a long-term benefit to the community, the pupils, and as a school. Litumezi Ahulu, 